Hello, I'm Tim Rogers, and you are watching a Kotaku.com special report. I come to you today with an opinion emergency. Do not watch the new Joker film. I've seen your endless tweets. I have dipped a whole half of my big toe right in to the discourse. Just this week, as the film's release impends, I saw you all fall for it. You're all there discussing security guards posted at movie theaters. You're discussing the dangers of copycat behavior. You're dissecting the director's comments about woke culture and comedy. You are giving him exactly what he wants. By watching this film, you will be enabling bad people. You will be contributing directly to the bank account of a literal serial killer. Like, why do we keep giving this guy so many second chances? I feel like we've given him like 47 second chances by now. That's like 49 chances. You're all like, oh, he's a stand-up comedian now. And I'm like, do you not forget that back in 2008, he hijacked two boats, rigged them with explosives, and then made the passengers decide which boat to blow up? That's sick. Now, thankfully, nobody got hurt. That doesn't mean he hasn't hurt a lot of people over the years. Still, you're all like, Oh, he's a stand-up comedian now. Kinda interested in seeing what he has to say. Well, I'm not. The man is a killer. Like, remember in 1989, he busted into a museum, he defaced a bunch of paintings, and you were all like, Oh, that's social commentary. It's taking down the art establishment or whatever. And he printed a bunch of dollar bills with his face on them, and you were all like, oh, that's social commentary. It's about capitalism. Well, it's also a crime. It's counterfeiting. And moreover, then he nerve-gassed a bunch of people in the street. Thousands of people literally died. Now, are you going to try to tell me that was social commentary, too? Well, whatever it was, by 1993, you'd all completely forgotten about this. The guy just came right back, and you all fell for it. He came out imploring us to sympathize with his quest to assemble magical jewels. And you know what he actually did with the magical jewels? He further perpetrated his selfish, sinister mission to cultivate a nationwide obesity epidemic. In 1994, he did a stint as a professional boxer. Yes, he fought dirty. And you all were like, what a lovable scamp. Then he entertained you all with madcap frantic antics in a series of adventures, at the end of each of which he stopped explosives from detonating. This was clearly propaganda. He was scrubbing up his image for his next big score. And his image needed scrubbing with an elephant brush. His propaganda was so effective that everyone forgot that time back in 1989 when he kidnapped a little boy's little sister at a circus. You just, you, you, you can't trust this guy. I mean, you can't trust him to run an amusement park, that's for sure. You definitely can't trust him to tell you a bedtime story. And I'm gonna say, I wouldn't trust him to tell me any jokes either. There's just, there's, there's something wrong with him. Like, there's something actually wrong with this guy. Now, personally, I can't trust a guy whose politics I just, don't understand. Back in 1988, he and several like-minded make-up ultra-liberals violently and ballistically opposed the efforts of well-meaning, well-armed Republicans who were seeking only to clean up all the deadly drugs infesting our city streets. Then, in 1996, he sided with the extreme right-wing Dr. Wiley in his losing election bid against Dr. Light. What are you doing? Mommy, out! What have you done to me? See you in my dreams. In 2008, he collaborated with mob bosses, demanded millions of dollars in cash, and then he burned it. In 2016, he was back to using his devious wit and his criminal talents in aid of an underground progressive agenda targeting conservative politicians in Tokyo, Japan. Like, what does he even want? It's almost like he's playing both sides. Like he's just messing with everyone. Like, it's just fun for him. 
It's like all of us are playing Assassin's Creed while he's playing Grand Theft Auto. Some people are all like, oh, well, he's got a tragic backstory. And like, yeah, I hear that. He got tricked into murdering his wife and daughter, and yeah, that sucks. I can almost sort of let him get away with killing the person that tricked him. Though, did he really have to go and kill literally every god in the world as revenge? This is a guy so cold-heartedly intent on believing that rules do not apply to him. So, so bent on atheism that he had to kill God with his bare hands. And you're all like, oh, he's just a sad guy with some problems. Well, I'm a sad guy with some problems too, though I never killed anybody. Meanwhile, in 1994, this guy literally poisoned the water supply of the Kingdom of Doma, simply to further the interests of an imperialist regime, which he then betrayed by dropping a continent onto the earth, ending the world in a mad grab for global dictatorship. We got him though. We got him. We locked him up and somehow he got off with a slap on the wrist. And you know what he did immediately after he got out of jail? He stole a goddamn ice cream truck and he started shooting up other motorists. I was trying to talk about the Joker here in my office the other day. I was like, we need to execute this guy. We need to stop putting him into electric chairs, which malfunction every time he sits in one. We need to stop trying to use whatever that weird incinerator machine was we, we tried in was it 2015. We need to just sit him down, tie him up, and put four bullets in the top of his skull. Point blank range. And everyone was just looking at me like I said something ridiculous. Somebody in the office was like, oh, it just sounds like you have a thing against clowns. And I was like, no, this isn't about clowns. The guy's sick. The guy is genuinely sick. The guy is literally murdering people like every other day. Though what if it was about clowns? It used to be when you told someone you were afraid of clowns, they would laugh at you. Nowadays, they just tell you to grow up. Now everyone's like, being afraid of clowns is stupid. They say it's quote unquote cliche to joke about being afraid of clowns. Though seriously, think about it. How many good clowns have you personally known? Probably none. I painstakingly selected 50 random examples of clowns from the last 50 years of history. Do you want to guess how many of them were killers? 44. That's 88% of clowns. So if you want to continue to say that it's cliche to be afraid of clowns, at least start also acknowledging that it is equally cliche for a clown to be a serial killer. Have you ever noticed how it's only the parents who dislike their children that invite a clown to ruin their birthday parties? Why do they do this? Because clowns are terrifying. Since ancient Sumerian times, humans have been slathering their faces with white paste and perpetrating atrocities upon dumbstruck victims. Clowns simultaneously ask and answer the question, what if a person was a little bit whiter than a regular white person? Hitler was a clown. Right now, this Joker guy is in two films screening across America at the same time. In one of these two films, there he is, hiding in plain sight, back at his old tricks, killing children. Meanwhile, you all are so busy looking at the other film where he's dancing and prancing like Rocky Balboa on some stairs yelling Adrian, and you're like, yeah, let's give him an Oscar. You already gave him an Oscar, like 10 years ago. I swear, if you all go see this movie and it makes like $800 million and you give the Joker another Oscar, he's just gonna turn right back around and start killing again. And next time, it might be one of your children. So please, be safe. Stay home this weekend. Thank you. I'm Tim Rogers. I was born stupid, however I will not die hungry. Video games forever. Kotaku.com. Thank you. Well,
know how I got these scars. I actually am going to go see that Joker movie on Saturday in 70 millimeter film. I mean, maybe it's gonna be okay. I don't know. I mean, remember Batman Begins and everyone was like, oh, Batman's all serious now. It's not, it's like a real movie. And now we've got like a decade of those Marvel movies and DC's like, look what we made. I saw the trailer. I try to not watch movie trailers. I saw the trailer and I was like, they really, they just kind of brought like a, they just, they, they wore a Tom Ford suit into TJ Maxx. That's what they did. I'm not saying either of those things is better or worse than the other. It's just, it's kind of a weird thing to do, right? That's my pre-review. I'm gonna watch the movie and I'm gonna keep my opinions to myself. Guy's got green hair and he's got, he's got a clown makeup. It's just kind of weird. I mean, kind of interested in seeing what he has to say.